If you've been keeping up with the engine saga on my TD42 Nissan GQ Patrol, you would know that this is actually the third motor in this car for the year. We only put this motor in a few months back, which is actually a brand new TD42 crate motor from Nissan. We got a lot of comments on that video about why I was on my third motor in this car this year and well within the space of a few months. Many comments, a few blaming my driving ability, the way I drive this car. Quite a few blaming the tuning, uh, Berto who had tuned and set up the turbo on this engine a couple of times saying his dodgy tuning, it's his fault, that's why the motors are blowing up. So in this episode we're going to strip down and try and diagnose the previous motor we pulled out of this car which was a second hand one I picked up a factory turbo TD42 of 217,000 kilometers on it. We thought it was good, but pretty much as soon as I put it in and started using it, well, it, was, it wasn't that great. It was burning a whole heap of oil and had a pretty bad knock in it. So we'll try and work out. Was it my driving? Was it Birdo's dodgy tunes? Or what actually happened to that motor and what's happened to the last couple of motors? So make sure to stick around to see that and at the end I'll also give an update on this brand new crate motor it's done about 10,000 kilometers now how's it going any teething issues is it having the same problems as the previous motors holy shit right. it's right down the bottom eh? Yeah. but you can feel that like it yeah you, you can see it it's stupid Proudly supported by Ultimate 9, Tread, Opus Campers, Superior Engineering, and in part by. Someone was annoyed. Thank you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Berto's just turned up here with the motor, picked it up from G Works. It's been sitting there for the last two and a half months, so I think they're keen to. See it gone. Now we gotta try and get it off this trailer into the shed where we're gonna strip it down in a couple of days. Get the chaos recovery gear out, mate. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. <laughs> One man team. Nothing different there. <laughs> That's the TD42 engine block back in my garage. So just gonna leave it there now. Total will be over in a couple of days. And that's where we're gonna strip this thing down and find out what's going on with it. Try to catch me howling at the moon. Back again a couple of days later, Todd's here. Just put the engine on the engine stand. And then we're going to start stripping it down, see what we can find. So we'll sort of do a step by step. Not in that box. Oh, I'm just putting all that box down. You got an empty box dollar or what? Oh, man. Oh, it should be. <laughs> you don't have to do this step. But we're, we're going to check our clearances. Wind it over to top dead center. We either number one or number six. Number six, we can do one, two, four, five, eight, nine. One by one, we can do three, six, seven, ten, eleven, twelve. I've got to look in a book to know that. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the point of checking the valve clearances now while we're pulling the so engine apart? Just, just to make sure none are tight. Tight here. So what's that mean if it's too tight? If it's tight, it's like you'd be riding, so you'd be losing compression yeah. through the exhaust or intake, depending on what one it is. Which ain't gonna make no tapping or knocking or nothing. It'll just make it go slow and be shit. Gotcha. Run a bit bad. It won't make it burn bulk oil or anything. No. No. Welcome to the best screwdrivers you ever used. Big W special, those ones. <laughs> Chrome vanadium. <laughs> <laughs> Need a pair of sight, you bloody multi grip thing onto it. This has had a head off it. These aren't stock head bolts. They're like after the head bolts. Which, it's not uncommon. Like, it's still a however old car. Yeah, the rods. 
can too check to see if they're bent, but they're never bent. You just roll on like that. He does a little wobble wobble. Okay. He's bent. He doesn't wobble? He's not bent. I'm just undoing the head bolts. Usually if you are keeping the head, you undo them in the reverse pattern. You do them up, so you start from the ends and work your way forward. But... So is the head bolts all of them, like as in one, two, yeah, three, two four, pieces. the whole way along? Yeah. How many were there? 22. There's the problem. Three come to all cracks, but that's normal. I don't know about you, but I can't see anything crazy going on with no head gasket. The head gasket looks pretty good. It's not blown between them. Normally when it blows between them, there'll be like burn marks. You'll have witness marks and everything. What's going on internally? Yeah, on three and four. You've got a lot of carbon build up on them. Yeah. And this one, this one. Clean, one, two, clean, five, clean, six, shit, shit. Clean. A bit dirty, dirty. Oily, oily. And you look down the bore here. Probably on this side. It's on your thrust side. Yeah. Down in. You've got a bit of scoring. That's not bad, 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 bad. But it's bad enough to go. Oil was going to go out. See you later, I'm going to then I'll jump out of there. So is that a, a thing there straight away of why it's burning oil? Yeah. And what's up with it? I've kind of missed it. What, what we'll are have to pull the pistons out. Well, it's either, yeah, rings. crack rings or they're just seized. Yeah. Like carbonated up to the piston. And we reckon, you're saying it's three and four are the, are the ones that's done it. Yeah. yeah. If your fingernail gets caught on it, it's too much. Is your fingernail getting caught on it? Correct. Yeah, okay. Give so, us a nail bite now. So is that on the liners, your fingernail's getting caught on them? Yeah. Like, you know how I showed you when we were looking at your brakes and that, and I was like, if you can feel yeah. that or whatever. Yeah. Same, pretty much same with anything that's metal on metal. If you can feel something with your fingernail, it's, it's going to be cactus. Yeah, okay. We're ready to spin this shit, DJ. Oh, you want, you want me to help you, do you? Okay. Yeah, well, um, go back a little bit. Like, twist it back. I did say that. <laughs> I nothing involved. Nothing involved. Can't believe you just did that, Tom. <laughs> you were at the other end, mate. Yeah, no, but I saw. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's oil in it. I wasn't involved. Yeah, yeah look at you. Yeah, look at you <laughs> so what we'll do now is just drop the oil out. <laughs> we'll cut that, we'll cut that. <laughs> I'll cut it out for you, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> We've just used $12 worth of rags, so we're going to dock that from you too. You know what type of oil that is? Black. It's oil that burns. <laughs> not even that old. Nah, it's not. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's got to top it up every fucking time. Tommy does 500 gas. Yeah, he's using like probably like five ish litres. Five to six litres per thousand. Yeah. Just ha half a sump. Something up with it, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something gone on. Something wrong with it. Should drop a sump. Somebody help take a little bolt out, eh, Dick? Yeah, it's still a bolt. Yeah. I should scratch that carbon off before we knock them out. Yeah, Tom. You'll see. It'll, like when yeah, you knock on the pistons, pistons out. Yeah. And a protrusion. So whoever built it. These liners are meant to stick up, but they're sort of not. Now, let's get all the carbon off. Now I'll just stick a dial gauge on to see if we are up or not. So what does it want to be? 0 0.06? 0 0.068 to 0.218. You reckon this is why it's got good compression? Because they're up real high. So the higher your piston is right to the head, the more compression you have. Depending on the head gasket. Yeah, you, one, different two, thicknesses. Three. Grade one, grade two, grade three. Less than 0.118 mil, you go a grade one. This is grade two, I'm pretty sure. That's a two. Yeah, 0 0.5 DO2. This is why people say, hey, you can't rebuild it. It's because no one really does it properly. <laughs> Yeah, okay. yeah, like half an info from this one, half an info from that one, and then it's all yeah. back to front. So has this been rebuilt at some point? I reckon it probably has. Yeah. From factory, they'd have protrusion, yeah. and that it'd all be set up perfect. Like it wouldn't be wrong. 
from factory. The head gasket could be wrong if our buds done ahead, but you still should have line protrusion there. Yeah. Is that saying it wears out over time? No. No, so that's just been done wrong. Yeah. But it sort of doesn't make sense of why it's done what it's done. Like yeah. why are we carboned up here? And like what this could have got this could have got hot before you got it. Um, like these two and grabbed a bit, the bores, then the rings. Or it could have just been gummed up, carboned up, and then they're stuck in. Yeah. Like there's there's possibilities. Like most blokes wouldn't care, they just kept driving it until it does. Most people literally would have kept driving that until it sent a rod out or whatever it would have done. Yeah. You just kept throwing oil until there's no more oil. It would have been fine until you ran out of oil. <laughs> yeah. So, what you've seen so far isn't really at risk of it blowing up as such. Oh, well, the rings aren't going to be good. It's going to be used oil. Not ideal, but as long as you have oil, like, keep oil up to it, not dead in the I was just rubbing this carbon off. So, when you push the piston, yeah, it doesn't pick up. But I'll pick the carbon up, just so we get a more accurate look at the piston. Otherwise, it looks real bad. Scratches the pistons on the way out. Undo on the big ends. It's on the piston, you got a big end and a little end. How do the bearings look? Bearingy, got a mark on them. You weren't ready to snap a crank though. They look good, eh? I don't think they've been touched. <laughs> factory. T1F. So that's all factory stuff there? Yeah. They're bogged or broken? Not bogged? Not broken. Not bogged, not broken. Nothing wrong with it. They're factory. UD. Few days Nissan truck. That's some ball wear, eh? Right? Rings are all moving. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking at the ring. So you look, and sometimes they can crack and be like chunked off, and when come out, a bit will be falling off. Or if they're gummed up, they'll be stuck in. Or I don't know. You ever seen them where they like the ring? Like if you get too hot, the rings butt breaks a ring. Todd knows more than me. I don't know. I'm just a young chap. <laughs> I'm just making it up as I go. I don't know, it's lucky. Unless they've just slapped pistons and yeah. rings. Unless he's got a bloody handful of dirt down the street. Yeah, being dusted or something. Sanded. So, the, all the others are coming out much easier than three and four. Yeah. And they're looking nicer too. So there's definitely something going on in cylinder three and four. I feel like these rings have a lot more tension than they thought too. All rods and pistons. Yeah. And what have we worked out so far? Nothing. What do you have to have so far? I don't know. <laughs> Unless they've had a bit of water in those bores, these two. It was, it was sitting gone. for five years before, wasn't it? So there's something going on in three and four, because yeah. they're sus, but I don't exactly know what possibilities of water, sand, dirt, something in them. Like that, them two are fucked. I feel the lip there. Yeah. That's way too much. For them to wear like that, it's... It's had to have water or something. Like well, she ran 5,000 k's without an air filter. Holy shit. Right. It's right down the bottom, eh? Well, is that pretty bad for what a ball should be? Yeah. That's well over You can size. see it. You can see it. Down see how down. it goes, it's all lined down, right? Yeah. It's all lined down. See how it goes dark, dark, and then clean, but there's like those two shadows above it? Yeah. They're big ridges. Like, these are meant to be like dead smooth, yes. uniform yeah. finish. These have to be perfectly round. If they're not round, round piston goes down. No square hole. Rings but, don't seal because it's not round. It's just gone down, opens up, let's, let's whatever pass. <laughs> so it's letting, that'll be what's happening, it's letting all the oil pass on... Well, the oil's not cleaning the bore, like, cleaning the oil off the bore. Yeah. On three and four, so that's where, that's why I'd be blowing all the blue smoke and burning heaps of oil. Yep. For that three and four there. Correct, though. If you no. want, if you want this to be a good go, right? Crank's pretty good, the bearings are good, so you know, that, like, crank, all that is good. Yeah. Yeah, you can probably get crack tested still, but it's fine. You can take it to a machine shop, take these liners out, put new liners in, set it up to all the specs it's meant to be. Yeah. And then, if you really wanted to get some new rings, new, new bearings anyway, because there's no point not doing new bearings. Yeah, I just got a set of pistons, bearings, get them ceramic coated. Put it back together. How much do you reckon that costs? Too much. Too much, four or five grand probably. I heard you're going to rebuild it, Todd. Really? Yeah. Sick. <laughs> Cashy on Friday. One hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so I reckon that's your main car for a day. And this one... I don't think it's been hot. Nah. If it had been hot, you'd have a lot of big, deep getting pistons connecting. So I could have kept driving it. It just would have been always letting oil out through those bores And if, if you didn't top it up, yeah. it's, it'd say, see you later, as soon as yeah. you let it run. And, and is there, with the bores being like that, is there any higher risk of the engine imploding itself in any way? Yeah, it'll eventually just start slapping around and just keep getting worse and worse and worse. And worse. And worse. 
So is that what that, that noise? That would have been what that slap was, I reckon. You reckon that was that piston that moving around in there? That's the only real thing we've seen so far that would potentially make a noise. Yeah, I'd like to get a micro ball. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, you come back, you come back, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to measure the ball clearance, like what it's supposed to be. And, yeah. But you can feel that. like it's, Yeah, you, you can see it. It's stupid. So that's like, you, that's not common for seeing that bad. That's oh, like, I've never, honestly, I've never seen it like that before. That's real bad. My one with a snap crank, that was like blown up. Didn't even look like that. <laughs> yeah, okay. <Nah. laughs> Something's had to have gone down them then. Water or dirt oh, or... Yeah. Well, you got to think too, right? If so... it sat around for five years, it could add like condensation water in there. That piston's half seized, maybe. Or TD water. intake. First two that get dirt, them two. Three and four. Mm. The intake's right here, right? And then the dirt oh, goes the easiest side, path. Mate. Well, whichever side, right? <laughs> 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 Easiest way straight in. Yeah. Yeah, it's very important. Like, so these you, are going to get the least amount of air, least amount of dirt, they're going to get the most amount of dirt straight away. Potentially had dirt down the airfield then, dust and dirt, it's gone into three and four yeah. and chewed them out. Just all theories, but you know. Theories. Yeah, theories. theories. Well, there's the problem. We, we never really know. We you, found the problem, but yeah. And then you, you sort of never know why. Well, yeah, because we can't uh, really talk to it and say, mate, what really well, happened? What happened you know? to you? <laughs> hey, like, dickhead, what happened? Like, <laughs> what's wrong with your ears, man? Like, Big night, eh? We'll do, a, yeah. we'll do a, we'll do a com <laughs> comment down below the theories of what happened to, oh, to ball no, three and four. Oh, there many on there. Did I you check this? Did you check that? I reckon it was the guy that did the hot turn. <laughs> the hot turn? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, that's, I'm sure that's tune problem right there. So, the, everyone that said it was the bad tune, is that officially proven that it wasn't the tune? Oh, we can hear it. Look, you can put it on me <laughs> now. You can get <laughs> <laughs> If that's a tune issue, yeah, I'm a f***ing pelican. <laughs> no, you can be these days, eh? You don't think if it's a tune issue, that'd all be washed down and that'd all be f***ing, not yeah. just two. Yeah. Could potentially, what, bad injectors washing it down? There's multiple possibilities. And were you going to show the difference between the NA and the turbo oh, piston? Yeah. Since you brought an NA stuffed NA piston. Yeah, that's an NA there, this one. And this is the factory turbo one. You see, you got an oil squirter hole. Yeah. So in the top of the head, you've got like oil galleries on top of the crown of the piston. But these ones, well, they've still got oil squirters, but they haven't got like any gallery or anything for it, like to keep them cool. So you flip them over, and that's what happens. Straight like crack down over the gudgeon. So is that one of the main difference between NA and a factory turbo piston on TD? Yeah. So on NAs, they just get more hot. Yeah, a lot more heat. And they, they eventually crack from the heat. Yeah. Like when they're not turboed, They'll do their milling cars, but as soon as you just slap a turbo on, you punch a lot more heat into them, the then they start cracking. Pistons can't keep yeah. themselves cool enough. Yeah. Now, big mess. Yeah. <laughs> what do we do with it all? There's scrap metal been here somewhere, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to buy a TD? It's like a, you know like you buy a box of Lego? Yeah. You buy a box of TD parts and build oh, it yourself. I've had that many engines turn up to work, nuts and bolts, everything. Like, not pistons off roads, everything. <laughs> uh, can you just rebuild the motor for me? <laughs> no, I can't. Yeah, you know what I mean? no and, then you and that's the motor stripped down and solves the mystery of what happened to the previous motor. That's the first time I've been involved in a motor stripped down, so I'm still learning like what a piston is, what a rod is, how this works. But yeah, there's obviously cylinders three and four, the liners or just inside the bores there, were pretty stuffed. Big grooves inside and pretty rough around all the edges. So I'm assuming that's what was letting all the oil out to burn and that's where all the blow-by was coming from as well. And potentially with that bit of movement, that's what was causing that knock in the engine as well, that piston moving around a little bit. That seems to be the most likely cause of all those problems I was having and it's always going to be a hard one to know exactly what happened. Uh, it started pretty much straight away after I put the motor in, so it wasn't something I did. Like, I never had it off-road. I pretty much drove it for a day or two on the road, and then we started realizing it was blowing blue smoke, and had a bit of blow-by, and that knock started coming around. So it's obviously the previous owner, so something had happened there, or just in the time it was sitting around for all those years, whether it got that moisture, water in there, or something's got in the intake. I have all these parts. 
lying around my garage there now. Have to work out a plan for it all. What do you guys reckon I should do? Should I, does anyone want to buy all these parts as is or should we rebuild it, get another TD going? Spare TD is probably always handy to have around. I have to get a little bit of a price on I suppose. I'm pretty sure a full standard rebuild on a TD is about seven or eight grand. And then if you add in strong head studs like ARP head studs and a billet crank, it takes up another four or five grand to get like a more bulletproof TD. And they also make those stroker TDs as well, which is another option, but then it gets more expensive. So changing from a 4.2 to a 4.5 liter engine, I'm not exactly sure how it works. It changes the stroke length or something. Get a bit more power out of it, I suppose. I still have the first motor as well. That's our dad's, that's a silver top. I probably won't pull that apart. I'm gonna assume something similar going on. Either, cause that was just burning oil as well. Had some blow by as well. I'm gonna assume that one was maybe rings, but it was just really a bit of unlucky of an unlucky run. It wasn't so much my driving or the tunes or anything in particular. When I bought the car, it had a 700,000 kilometer TD in it that was getting worn. And then we put a big turbo, big fuel pump, all that stuff on it. And it still worked fine. It still ran well. It was just burning, burning that oil and was showing its age. And being it was such a high kilometer, I'd always plan to replace it at some point. And then we picked up this other motor cheap, like factory turbo, 217,000 kilometers. It was four grand for the whole car. And then we made a bit of money off other pieces of the car. Still got some left as well. I still got GU diffs steering box, transfers, gearbox, all that stuff. And everything showed externally without stripping it down that that engine was really good. So then we're just like, well, we may as well put this beautiful turbo, factory turbo engine that we have in, then it'll be good for ages. But I put that in, <laughs> it was doing like even worse. It was burning that five, six liters of oil per thousand kilometers, had really bad blow by, had that knock. So I was stuck with like, an even worse engine. And if I was just doing like weekend warrior trips around the air, who cares? I just like leave it in there and if it blows up, it blows up. But we want to do big trips in the GQ. Like we just went all the way out through Central Australia, did 8,000 kilometers. Like you have to take what, 40 liters of oil to get through that trip. And you're out there with family, kids. You, you want something reliable. It's just not worth the risk. But if it was doing weekend stuff, I'd probably still have that silver top in and probably <laughs> still be going good. I'd just be topping up oil in it. But anyways, that's what happened, that's what's happened, that's the whole saga with the engines. What do you guys reckon I should do with this one? Rebuild it, someone wanna buy it? It's been a super cool learning experience. I've spent a lot of money too, which is not so cool, but that's full drives and cars for you. And we have the crate motor in now, which is going very well. No issues with it at all. It's not burning any oil, which even backs up everything even more about it not being anything we were doing because it's the exact same tune turbos fuel pump setup everything is the same on it and it's very happy and healthy we just did that 8,000 kilometer trip i did a bit before then i've done a bit after we're up over 10,000 kilometers now done a couple of oil changes and it's loving life that could change tomorrow but hopefully not hopefully it'll last me a long time and I won't end up with any snapped cranks or any major problems going on with it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I'll see everyone on the next one. There still is a couple more of our Central Australia trip to go, so I'll probably start posting them again, but I'll see what's coming up. Yeah, man, I like you.